this is a Waze Bluetooth beacon. You put them in tunnels uh, about 40 meters apart. Just stick them up there with this double-sided tape here. It's very easy. And, um, and you put them throughout the tunnel. We have a tunnel in um, here outside Oslo. It's 2,300 meters long, so we put up 59 of these. And, um, and inside you find these long-lasting batteries. They last for about six years. The ones that we installed in the Björnegård tunnel, they have already been there for four years and they are working perfectly fine. So it's got a little bit of electronics and antenna here. So I'll jump into the car here and I'll uh, drive down to the Björnegård tunnel with uh, three Androids. One Android without Bluetooth, one with Bluetooth, and then um, that they both are running Google Maps. And then I'll put in one with, um, with the Waze app as well, just to show how that works. So, come along, we'll see how it works. Oh, by the way, if you want to see how we install these things, you can click on the link to another video below that we made four years ago, when we actually put these on the wall inside the tunnel. So take a look at that. I am in Sandvika, outside Oslo in Norway, and I am going to test the Waze Bluetooth beacons that we have installed in the Björnegård tunnel, which is right down that way. We installed 59 Bluetooth beacons in that tunnel in um, about four years ago. Uh, uh, and uh, the tunnel is uh, 2.5 kilometers. Uh, I have two Androids here. This on the right side is going to function with the Bluetooth turned on right there. On the left side, I will turn off the Bluetooth so that it cannot use the Bluetooth beacons in the tunnel. But that is not good enough because Google will kind of use the, beacon, the Bluetooth devices anyway. So you have to go in here to... Um, two locations, let me see here. Locations. And then I go to uh, VLAN scanning and Bluetooth scanning and turn those off. So now they're off. Now it cannot pick up the Bluetooth beacons in the tunnel. Alright. Now I'll tell um, both Android, uh, Androids, the Google map on both Androids, I want to drive to Drummond. There's Drummond. Directions and start. I'll do the same on this one. I want to go to Drummond. Head southwest, then continue straight. Directions and start. Head southwest, then continue straight. Then on this one here, I will use um, the Waze app. Let me turn on uh, screen capture. All right, so I say I want to go to Drummond. There it is. And go. Right, and we'll see how that works in the tunnel. So keep in mind the Google Maps on the left. In 200 meters, yeah. turn right. All right. And then at the roundabout, turn left, turn left. And then at the roundabout, turn left. As I was saying, this uh, left uh, Google Maps is not using the Bluetooth beacons in the tunnel. The right uh, Google Maps is using the Bluetooth beacons in the tunnel. So now we'll see the difference.
we have the tunnel, the Björnegård tunnel outside Oslo, 2.3 kilometers long. So I'm driving in about 80 kilometers per hour. So the Android on the left will stipulate how far I have gotten through the tunnel based on the speed limit or I don't know so the speed I had when I entered. The Android on the right will actually pick up the little Bluetooth beacons that are glued to the wall in here and that way it knows exactly how far I have gotten along in the tunnel. I will be driving a little bit below the speed limit to, to, to trick this one here on the left side. So I'm driving about 70 while well, the speed limit is 80. And I'm sorry, you guys behind me just have to pass. We have two lanes here. Now they lowered the speed limit to 60, so I'll just go uh, 50. The reason we installed the waste Bluetooth beacons in the Björnegård tunnel was that four years ago when the tunnel was built we installed lightning, emergency phone, radio equipments and fans in the tunnel. So then we went ahead and also installed the beacons. The Björnegård tunnel is a fairly simple tunnel. It's almost straight, just with a slight curve. But at the end you must make up your mind if you want to go straight ahead or if you want to turn right. So during these four years we have proven that the beacons are safe and reliable. They did not fall off the wall and did not hit any cars. They would stood cleaning several times per year by special trucks with powerful pressure washers and brushers. And they did not interfere with the FM radio, DAB, cellular communication or emergency network. And the installation as a whole has lasted for four years already. And it's still working perfectly fine as you saw in this video. During today's test, we checked the status of all beacons and out of 59, that we installed, seven did not respond and two reported low battery. But as recommended by Waze, we originally installed twice as many beacons as strictly necessary to provide sufficient level of redundancy. The beacons in this tunnel will probably work for another couple of years, but then the beacons must be replaced. That can be done when the tunnel is closed for cleaning and inspection. And you simply pry the beacons off the wall with a drywall taping knife, clean the spot with alcohol and stick up a new beacon. For the 2.3 kilometer long Björnegård tunnel, this will take about five hours. I think we have proven that this works and now we want to install the waste Bluetooth beacons in more complex tunnels like the Oprah tunnel, which has lots of entries and exits, forks and merging lanes. So let's install this in some more tunnels. It will really help taxis and buses, local commuters and visitors to Oslo and all the other cities in Norway. So let's roll this out. Let's install it everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> 